Hello, and welcome to another episode of Understanding AI. So, welcome to the second episode in the series. And this is a follow-on from the first episode where I sort of explained a little bit about the series. And we just had a look at the term generative pre-training transformer in its sort of totality. So what I wanted to do in this episode and a couple of episodes that are going to be following on from this is break down the term into sort of manageable bytes where we can start to look at what the individual parts, what does generative mean, what does pre-training mean, what does transformer mean within the scope of AI and more specifically within the scope of machine learning. The other thing I will say is at some point in this series, I will get on to programming concepts like things like TensorFlow and other libraries that might be used within machine learning or within AI or languages that might be used within AI. But at this point, um, as, I, as I move through over a number of weeks, I'm really just looking at terminology and concepts and for those that want to dig deeper, suggesting certain research papers to check out around the things that I'm going to be talking about. So let's move through this episode. So the best way to look at this is actually talk a little bit about classification because the term generative when applied to machine learning models is a form of classification of a type of model and machine learning models can generally be classified into two types of models generative models and discriminative models however you actually may come across a third classification of model and that's referred to as imitative so for a given set of data instances, so if we're building a model using data instances and we're using those to train the model, when they're presented with another data instances, a generative model can generate new data instances, which it bases on the instances that were used to train the model. Discriminative models discriminate between different kinds of data instances. So, for example, with the appropriate data instances to train the specific model, you could have a generative model, which could generate new photos of cats that look like real cats, and that's where you've used a model that you've trained, a generative model that you've trained on photos of cats. A discriminative model could tell a cat from a dog. Again, for that particular model, what you've done is you've fed it examples of cats and dogs, or it could be a wider set of animals. And the model is built in such a way that when you give it an example of something, it can discriminate and tell you, yes, that's a cat. Well, that's a dog. Now, one important point in all of this, and the first thing that alarm bell goes on in my head, is of course what happens if you present either a generative model or a discriminative model with a data instances that isn't something or isn't close to something that you've used to train the data. And that's something that's obviously very important with any machine learning model is what happens when you feed something to it that doesn't fall into a category or doesn't fall into something that it's seen. How does it respond? So that's the, the first thing to think about generally when you're talking with, about models, regardless of whether they're generative or discriminative. Obviously, what you've trained it on is super important that you know the limitations of your models based on what you've trained it on. And in later episodes, 
we'll get on to discussing about the different things that can occur if a model is, you know, under-trained or over-trained. And what can happen, how statistically when you feed your data instances into your training model, you know, what are you keeping back to do your testing to test metrics for those models? In another example, to differentiate between the two types of models, if you created a generative model trained on using data instances drawn from legal documents, you could use it to generate a new legal document or be, be it built on whatever you trained it on. Conversely, if you created a discriminative model trained using data instances labelled as being from various genres of writing, conceivably you could get it to discriminate by genre between different samples of writing. So again, there's this contrast between creating a model that generates something based on what was used to train the model and something that discriminates between the things that were used to train the model. The other thing is here, I'm using the term instance here quite a bit. And what I mean by an instance is really it's a, a thing, if you like, that is used within the model. So in the example earlier where we were talking about animals, an instant might be a picture of a particular animal. So I'm building my model using pictures of animals. In the case here on the screen where I'm talking about legal documents, you know, my instance is a, is a document. And instances can be really anything. They can be numbers, they can be documents, they can be pictures. They can be certain types of data. And of course, the other thing to consider is if you're generating a model based on a certain instance, in order to, to do either the generation or the discriminative, depending on the classification of the model, that instance needs to be in the same form or in a form that will generate that instance or comparable to that instance the instances that you use to train it and of course that's that's pretty obvious you know if I train um, a model on legal documents I can't really present it with a picture of a cat and expect anything meaningful to come out of it possibly I mean I yeah <laughs> it would be unlikely put it that way so a number of different machine learning models fall under these two classifications. And here's a list here of common generative models that you might come across. This list isn't exhaustive. And obviously you can see that in the particular example of GPT, you know, GPT is being put under the generative model. But GPT is interesting and you'll see why in a moment when I get onto you know it in totality because there's some interesting stuff going on with relation to whatever generative models it's using and whatever discriminative models it's using. So let's as I mentioned discriminative models let's look at the list here. So here's another short list, not exhaustive, of discriminative models that you may come across. Now, if you've done any form of data science at all, you know, which obviously uses techniques shared within neural networks, machine learning, artificial intelligence, you may well have seen some of these before. Certainly, logis logistic regression is probably, you know, when I first started to study data science, I'd previously, way, way back, had to do statistics 
And yeah, I'd already come across the term logistic regression there. So yeah, don't be surprised when you're studying machine learning or AI because there's a massive amount of statistics and probability in it. You'll probably recognize certain terms from other allied disciplines. So now just to circle back to GPT, why it's, for me it's so fascinating for a generative pre-training transformer, GPTs actually use a semi-supervised approach involving two stages. There's an unsupervised generative pre-training stage in which a language modeling objective is used to set the initial parameters. And then there is a supervised discriminative fine tuning stage in which these parameters are adapted to a target task. So just just so you're clear on that, in the case of a GPT, it actually contains both a generative stage and a discriminative stage. The reason why it's called GPT and not something like GPDT or whatever, or I suppose yeah, GPDFT might be more accurate, I suppose. Generative pre-training, discriminative fine-tuning transformer. Um, but it, it, it really likes to highlight the fact that it's generative, um, a generative pre-training stage as part of it. Now, in the following episodes, we'll talk about exactly what pre-training is, exactly what a transformer is, because the, the term transformer is referring to a particular structure of model that's used. Now, if you want to dive real deep into this from an academic standpoint, there's two papers that are, well, well actually one paper and one, this is actually a, a PhD a thesis, which I'll include a link to. So I know we're jumping from the, the relatively simple to the fairly advanced, but I, I did want to include these because it's quite nice to at least have a look at um, and get familiar with papers within um, any discipline. So yeah, the first one is a paper on discriminative versus generative classifiers. And the second one is a PhD thes thesis, which examined, examines, examines the three categories of discriminative, generative and imitative. So this one is two, this one is three. And I mentioned at the start there were, you know, there is this additional category that sometimes can be used to, which is called imitative. I'm not sure how widespread it is. So in closing, I think a good thing to think about with all of this is to think a lot about, you know, the nature of the two classifiers or the three, if you're interested in exploring imitative as well and how maybe certain types of learning tasks may be better suited to either of the types of model but also to think very seriously about when you're training a model what happens in certain instances with certain types of data when it is presented to that model and what sort of problems that may or may not cause. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now and I will catch you in the next episode.